For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Laminim. Joining me today to discuss a State of the Nation Address 2023 is the Center for Development Enterprise Executive Director, Anne Bernstein. So you highlight uh, five bad ideas that are dragging South Africa down and holding us back. Tell us about your critique of the developmental state and that of uh, CADA deployment. I'm arguing that there are a number of reasons why South Africa is in such a terrible situation today and that it's important that we don't gloss over the diagnosis, as I think the president does, to say, oh, it's just the Zuma era, and that, in fact, South Africa needs to agree on why we're in such a terrible situation. Now, one of the key components of this is a set of bad ideas. There are other issues, but the bad ideas translate into terrible policies. And the most important one in many respects is this notion that the ANC is continues to cling on to, which is that the state must lead, the state must drive the economy, and they will decide what space there is for the private sector. That That's the idea of a developmental state. Now, that might be one thing if you have a competent and smart state, but South Africa doesn't. We have a corrupt and collapsing state as we all sit in the dark for far too many hours. And in this context, to think that the state can lead the country, can drive the economy, is part of what's contributing to our problems. Why do we have monopolies on these critical services that South Africa desperately needs? They're failing. They're expensive. They drive up the costs of growth. What are now your reflections on what you, you've just uh, alluded to, the the bad ideas, when we speak now of the failure to appreciate uh, the power of markets? And also tell us about uh, why do you think it, it's bad for, for our government to believe in a high-wage, high-skill economy? So we sit at the moment in a situation where we hear what I think are Nice sounding words. The president wants the private sector to play a bigger role in infrastructure, in the economy, in helping to drive up growth and therefore more jobs. But when you actually look at what is done, we make it extremely hard for the private sector to do that. I don't think the ruling party and this government really understand the dynamic power of markets, of competition, of many, many entrepreneurs starting new firms or expanding existing firms. And because they don't fully understand how this could empower millions and millions of South Africans, including many poorer South Africans and people who've never had a job, they don't fully commit to markets. Of course, there's an ideological view, but unless you understand what has happened in other countries through the enormous power of markets, South Africa hovers between, well, we have to open up, we know that, but then they do it in a half-hearted way, and they don't fully understand the needs of capital to risk other people's money. So they don't really listen to what business people, big business, smaller business are saying to them as to the conditions that are holding them back in South Africa. So I think you mustn't just listen to the words. Remember last year's SONA, everyone got very excited that the president said, well, it's really the private sector that create jobs. He had said it before, Mm -hmm. since he became president, actually, but he doesn't apply it. Instead, we have half-hearted gestures, we have nice-sounding words, we have summits, we have task teams, but we never actually seem to commit to expanding the space for markets to to work much more efficiently in South Africa. And I could go into the things that do hold us back there. Mm, So it sounds like you are also uh, not um, convinced that a government is really working on extending or expanding the issue of the red tape so that uh, maybe companies from other countries can come and invest in our our country? Is it still uh, an issue for you? 
Well, many people think red tape is the major issue holding South Africa back. I think that is a very unhelpful approach. What holds South Africa back is our approach to the to markets and to creating. We're not creating a facilitating environment for private sector operators. And what does that mean? Yes, red tape is part of it, but it's actually bad policy. We have a localization strategy that makes that tries to force companies from Transnet to to others to buy local goods, even if we don't manufacture them. It pushes up the price of all sorts of things for state procurement. We ratchet up the requirements for black economic empowerment, which I'm obviously in favor of the principles of making this a much more inclusive economy, but how we do it, we have to do it in a way that doesn't harm our chances for growth. And we have to do it in a way that millions and millions of people benefit. Black South Africans who've been excluded for too long and not just a small elite. So I'm opposed to that. But the current approach drives up the costs of growth and makes this a less attractive environment for investment. So then you have to look at the actual cabinet. Why are we... Why do we have a cabinet where so few people are impressive? It looks like most of them can't do their job. And if you look at the country, that seems to be the case. There's some people with allegations of corruption against them still in the president's office or in the cabinet. And it's not just cabinet ministers and these mysterious deputy ministers who nobody seems to know what they actually do, but it is also the top teams in each department. That's a key message I'm trying to get across. In thinking about why South Africa is in such a terrible state, part of this is bad policy and bad ideas. The second part of this is a failed strategy. The president has been convinced that he has to maintain unity in the ANC over and above everything else. That means he holds back from making policy decisions that he seems to half want to make because it will offend certain people. He allows people in his cabinet to defy him, defy him publicly. He keeps people in his cabinet who don't deliver. So I think that failed strategy is a very important component. The, the needs of the country, the national interest must supersede the, the fear that there might be that if you took some appropriate and bold policy decisions, some people in the ANC might be offended or might leave. You know, in a democracy, you elect people to govern, and to govern is to choose. And if you choose, you are going to offend some vested interests in the current status quo. But you mm -hmm. You have to do that if South Africa is going to get back on track to being the kind of country we have so much potential to be. So do you also uh, believe that maybe a cabinet a reshuffle might lead to a more effective government? And what do you think are the key issues he should look at uh, our president when choosing these ministers? The problem we have is that the ANC pool of talent is extremely shallow. So, yes, I, I think the current cabinet is terrible. There, there are one or two exceptions, the Minister of Finance for one. But unless the president realizes, accepts that we are in a terrible crisis situation, we have multiple accelerating and entangled crises from energy to logistics, to crime, to security, to the, our education situation, to unemployment. You know, the list gets longer and longer and longer. Unless you accept we are in what you might call a poly crisis, well, I don't think a cabinet reshuffle is going to help very much if you look only at the ANC. But the point of the article and what I'm really saying in South Africa today, as we wait for the State of the Nation speech, is that this president's credibility as a reformer is now 
in serious question. In many respects, yes, there have been some reforms, but not nearly enough, glacial speed, and not fundamental enough. I think that the president as a reformer is a mirage. It's not what South Africa desperately needs. I don't see him taking the bold decisions that are required or finding the South Africans of talent to bring into his cabinet, which which really responds to, to where South Africa is today. So this endless discussion on a cabinet reshuffle and whatever, I don't think it's very interesting. It can be important, uh, but mm. I think there is a big power play going on in the ANC, but there's a much bigger issue. I think this government is stuck. They failed to modernize their political party and build a team of people with expertise and experience committed to the same vision of how to get South Africa back on track, how to get growth and millions and millions of jobs. We don't have that team. I'm not optimistic about this. The pool is much too shallow. And until he looks to other South Africans and a new approach, I think this president is is not going to make the bold decisions. He's not going to lead effectively. That's what we need. South Africa is desperately short of a courageous leader who says, this can't be business as usual. I'm not going to do what I've done for the last four years. It's not working very well. I am going to try a whole new approach. I don't think that's going to happen very sadly. You also now argue that a uh, South African government is guilty of what uh, the Chinese call uh, the two failures. What are these two failures and how do they apply in the South African context? Well, I'm saying I'm calling these two failures, as the Chinese might put it. I think the first one is, is really an inability to adapt to circumstances. Um, he hasn't learned from the failures and then decided on a new course of action. That's really important. This government has failed to choose priorities. They have a long laundry list of what they want to do. If you look at the 2020 growth and reconstruction strategy, this is a terrible document. It's not a strategy. It's a long list of everything anybody's ever thought of that might help South Africa. So I don't think we have priorities. The president might say that growth is a priority, really wants more investment. But then he allows cabinet ministers to enact laws that undermine that ambition. You don't have a summit and then you get investment. You have to make South Africa a competitive place in which to risk your money. And that's what we're not doing. And we have many other laws the policy of expropriation without compensation. This is not very attractive to investors. We prevent foreign firms and local firms bringing in the, the highly skilled people we desperately need who will help build this country and create more jobs. No, we can't quite get this right either. We And as I've said, we have all sorts of laws and regulations that make this a very unattractive place. And most importantly, we allow the state monopoly on absolutely critical services from energy to transport and ports to continue. Yes, there are gestures on, oh, we're going to bring the private sector in, but we keep messing it up and we don't do it properly. If we did it properly, we wouldn't be sitting with power failures today. And lastly, what are you expecting for from the upcoming State of the Nation address and what are the priority areas that you would like to hear uh, our president focus on in his address? Well, first and foremost, I would like a recognition of the real causes of our current multiple set of crises. So I'm asking for, I'm calling for a proper diagnosis. Because mm -hmm. only once you have a good diagnosis will you be able to talk about solutions. You know, if I say that, if you walk into a hospital and everyone says, oh, the problem is you've got a, a weak knee, 
um, that might not be the issue at all. We focus on that rather than some other things going on with your health. So we don't have an honest, frank diagnosis. And then I think from that flows everything I'm saying. We need a change of policies. We've got to get rid of cadre deployment. We have to say we're opening up to the market dramatically. We have to say we're losing jobs every single day because of the power crisis. I need a market-based solution. I need deadlines for this. I need to know who's accountable. It never gives us a plan where there are deadlines, targets, or accountability. So sort of somewhere between this minister and that minister and Eskom and NERSA and whatever, they should have fixed this long ago. This is where we're going. This is what we're going to do. And these are the deadlines. And I will report back to Parliament. I think there are a lot of issues that need to be fixed. I don't think SONA is going to deliver a new approach for South Africa, new people to help get us out of our crisis, a new approach to market-driven growth, and a new approach to driving a very different environment that could help get us more investment and more jobs. I remember in 2019, the president said to a big business conference, he said, nobody's ever told me what we have to change in the labor market to build a more labor intensive economy, which was nonsense. We immediately wrote two op-eds saying, these are the laws you have to change. You have to stop extending collective bargaining agreements to people who are not at the table, small business, new firms, rural business. There are a range of things you can do a range of things we can do to help smaller businesses. But all, we tend to talk, talk, talk. We don't know how to implement even the few good policies we might have. And we have a lot of bad policies, which then hang over the economy and prevent all sorts of things happening. We also, you know, we have yet to see any talk of anybody being charged or subject to disciplinary action post the failed insurrection in 2021. This is a major attack on our constitutional order, but nobody seems to, there are no leaders. There's nobody we're going to deal with. We move on until, you know, when the president's own report had suggestions of what to do. We're not making progress on any front and words are cheap. Too many words, too many eloquent speeches that describe our problems and then end up saying, I'm going to do more of the same with the same people who are mainly incompetent. I, I don't have much hope. We're not going to see a real way forward for the country, which is in many respects in a much worse place than we were when the president first took office. So it's not just nine wasted years of the Zuma era, state capture and corruption, terrible as those are. And they are an important contributor to why we are in trouble. But we have to look at this, the five-year term of this president to see why things are getting worse in many areas and not better. What has actually been achieved? What's really being delivered? We had... And we still have a sophisticated economy. We had one of the most sophisticated, biggest economies in the, on the continent. Uh, and we're in decline. We're in decline. I'm saying that if you were looking at South Africa from out of space or from Mars, mm. and you could see what was happening from the decline of our roads to one of our largest retailers telling us he cannot get his trucks to his supermarkets, to everything else that's happening, you would have to say, I don't think the people running this place are able to do it or know what they are doing. There was Anne Benstein, a director from the Center for Development Enterprise, speaking to Polity about the upcoming State of the Nation Address 2023.